Remember the time I said I was gonna build a new filter for the 2000 gallon aquarium? Remember I said that, I don't know, several times for several years and simply didn't do it. Now with the renovations done for the aquarium gallery and everything's in place, there's no turning back and I'm not ripping walls down or moving fish tanks out here anymore. I got too many other things that I wanna do and this is going to become for the first time a proper aquarium gallery. It's now time to do the fine tuning and do the things that I can now do because there's not a bunch of big things going on and the first thing I wanna do is build a new filter for the 2000 gallon aquarium. Let me show you the original plans first. Ah, before we go there, when it comes to the 2000 gallon aquarium, it needs a new filter for a number of reasons. The mechanical filtration, uh, as well as biological filtration, just isn't working anymore that well on this big old canister filter that we have back here that's rated for 4,000 gallons of water. I've tried a number of ways to fix it. Um, I've tried to take it apart, clean it all, do it. There's just something broken in it and I can't figure it out. Plus, there's only so much flow I can run through it. It's not the easiest thing to maintain. I want something better, something that's customized, something that I want, but that something doesn't exist, so we have to build it. But where am I going to put this? Well, we've got a couple of options. We can still walk through here, and I can still put the filtration system in here. Obviously, we have the discus in there right now, uh, and eventually that room is going to become the filter for the 700 gallon piranha aquarium. If you look at this tank, it's always kind of like hazy and cloudy a little bit. There's not enough flow in this tank. The, uh, again, I'm using a, one of those canister filters rated for about a 2000 gallon aquarium. They worked really good about five or six years ago. Their warranties are, I think are only good for one year. And I, and I guess I'm kind of seeing it now. They're just the wear and tear uh, goes on them pretty quickly. So where can I put these filters if I can't put it in that room? I could put it in that room, but I have a number of things I want to do out there. This is so cool, isn't it? Well, not only can we access the 2000 from going around at this side and or this side, we also have the drains from when I originally built this 2000 gallon aquarium. These are the drains. They're, they go right through eight inches of concrete. And these are the returns. I'm not going to use those returns. I'm going to do something customized that go underneath these rocks. But here's the problem. We actually only have a certain amount of space back there. That's not that big of a problem, but first let me show you how much space we actually do have. Don't look behind me and don't look at everything. Focus on the video. I don't want you guys ruining other things that I'm working on. Because I changed my mind about some certain things. Now that the gallery is set up and I've got everything, I've decided certain fish have to go in certain aquariums, which means I have to kind of change the scapes. To some we'll get into that in a, in a future video. Back here, we have exactly 23 inches, maybe and that's pushing it. Near the bottom though, we have 22 inches. See, when I built this, I, I built it so I'd have 24 inches. I was off by an inch, not that big of a deal. But what you guys don't know is when uh, I was pouring the concrete into the concrete forms, the bottoms of them blew out. Even though it was supported properly, it was drilled into the ground and everything was going right, this, this wall here blew out. So it's kind of like, there's more concrete down there, an inch more. So it's nine inches down there and eight inches up here. But I always knew there was gonna be around 24 inches. It just never panned out that way. So originally I was going to build these um, 55 gallon barrel filters. But if we look at the dimensions of those, like this one here, uh, they're about 24 inches wide. They're kind of a little bit wider here. I've already tried to stuff it back there. It just doesn't fit. So I'm off by about an inch, which kind of sucks, but I have a better plan. This isn't the first time you've seen one of these before. These big brute garbage cans, 121 liters. Um, relatively expensive, about 50 bucks per barrel. But those 55 gallon barrels are triple the cost for me to get a new one. I don't trust buying them secondhand. I don't care what the seller says was in it before. I'm not buying it. I want it brand new, never used, because what if there's oil, a plastic can absorb some types of liquids and whatnot, so it's just dangerous to buy um, used 55 gallon barrels. 121 liters, about 32 gallons, so they're not as big, but I don't need it to be a large volume of water. My interest is not to add a massive volume of water to the 2000 gallon. I'm looking for a container that can hold the amount of media that I require, that can handle the flow rates that I'm gonna put at it. But I don't want just one of these. I don't want just two of these. I want four of these built into two filters. Let me show you. I already built one. I built it because I've never built one like this. Ah, uh, yes, I have built one like this before. It was about nine years ago. We took, we built these out of uh, 55 gallon barrels where the first barrel was mechanical as well as biological. The second, the second barrel was of course uh, the return pump. 
and a settling chamber type of deal. And I did that, I put that on my 540 gallon aquarium, worked like a dream. So we're going to kind of recreate it. Let me show you what I got. This is two of those brute garbage cans connected. Looks pretty cool. I'm gonna build two of these. I got more of the stuff that I need right here. Let's open one. A little container. This is going to hold all of my uh, filter floss. I want to be able to just come over to it and the most maintenance I want to do is rip out the filter floss and put new one in. I'm going to get incredible, uh, incredibly great uh, mechanical filtration that's going to polish the water. What if these clog? What if the, uh, the filter floss clogs? Because it can. It can obviously flow with the sides or because it's about one inch from the top it can fl overflow at the top if I'm if you know if I ever forget to change it or whatnot. I'm holding this up through its little things, little holes, with a wire uh, clothes hanger. It's really hard to find these these days. They're all plastic or wood or whatever, but um, I did was able to find a couple of these and you can use whatever you want, but even rope. But uh, this filter is really big, but I'm going to be able to show you, I'm building it in a way that anybody can use this on their aquariums, especially the big ones, whether your aquarium is drilled or not. So this just comes right off. Water's gonna come in and flow through here. Media is going to stand up on here uh, and it's gonna hold about 85 liters of media, which is about, what, 22 gallons of biological media. Um, it's going to be supported on this big blocks of media. So I'm not worried over here. I just wanted to elevate it off the ground. So I used some egg crating. And then these are just three inch I just grabbed these. I'm, I might even cut them in half, make them shorter. I just needed something that uh, could hold it off the ground because at the bottom we have these drains. This is the spare one. These are stainless steel shower drains. They look blue right now because they have their protective film on them, but it's stainless steel. So if you can imagine, those are at the bottom. Water's going to flow up through there and overflow into the next one. These are to release any air. Without these T's, this isn't going to work. Um, we could have an air backup and the, t and the tubs could potentially overflow. But since I've added these in, there's no restriction and they can overflow to the next tank. Why am I doing it through here? Why not I just drill through the bottom and let it go through the bottom or drill through the bottom and come up through here? I want it as simple as possible and as safe as possible. If there's ever any leaks, it's gonna be really tough for me to get them to them from here uh, behind the 2000 and up here I can easily reach it and repair it if I need to. But I do want water flow to go through the top so I can easily mechanically filter it, go through all the biological media, then overflow through here. I'm gonna show you how this works in a second. We're gonna fill this up and test it. Then we got one and a half inch pipe connected with uh, uni seals, two inch uni seals. For, every, uh, for a two inch uni seal, you want a three inch hole. We're gonna build another one of these in a second. I'll show you step by step. And that simply overflows to the pump chamber. Now I've got a couple options here. I might end up hanging another basket of mechanical filtration for just additional water polishing. The pump's actually gonna sit in here and pump it back to the tank. I might also add in more egg crate, just like this one. And maybe we have twice the amount of filtration required. But the pump on here is only gonna be about 3,000, 2,500, 3,000 gallons an hour. For every two inch pipe laid horizontally like this, especially with this, uh, with these T's, I would typically rate this here pipe at around uh, 1500 gallons an hour, that's maximum. That's if water level comes up above it. But because of the T's, I'm gonna take off 300 gallons an hour, estimate these to be around a total of 2400 gallons an hour. Notice there's already kind of water in there. I already tested all this. I, I did leak tests and a 24 hour running test. Now let me show you how it all works. So as the water is going to fill up in this tank, obviously the water's just gonna come up, right? But it's also gonna fill up these tubes. And because there's no back pressure, because this is wide open, it's going to be able to fill up the tubes unrestricted and simply overflow to the side. I could put it at an angle and make sure it flows down. It doesn't matter. All right, let's fill this up and then I'll put a pump on it and show you how it works. I feel like as by the time these uh, barrels fill up, I could have built another one. This is really simple and easy to do, but we do have some issues. First and foremost, these are two inch uni seals. It allows you to run pipes uh, through containers very cheap. These should cost you about $1.50 to $2.50 for these two inch uni seals in the United States. In Canada, uh, what did I pay? Six, seven bucks each. Supply and demand, locality, everything doesn't cost the same everywhere. 
Um, I could have went with bulkheads, but these are curved surfaces. Bulkheads cost more as well. These are so easy to use and install, but it's not easy to put the pipes in. It's the, literally the worst part about using these. Two inch uni seal. This part goes in. Two inch uni seal <laughs> requires a three inch hole. So you do need some hole saws and whatnot, but it'll go in uh, and this edge is what goes in it, right? And then as you put a pipe in, because this isn't a two inch hole, it stretches. And as it stretches, the outer seal stretches and creates a seal along the uh, perimeter. You do not need to silicone or do anything like that simply because these create a good seal. It's gonna come down to how you drill the hole. If you drill a hole and there's a lot of jagged edges, this isn't gonna do its job. You need a smooth edge. Also, these flow rates and whatnot are taken from my book, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself Handbook for the Do-It-Yourself Aquarius. Even I still resort to and reflect on that book. Where am I gonna drill this? Well, obviously you wanna take advantage of the most take most advantage of the volume of this container so you would think that you would drill near the top. That's a bad idea because uh, it can overflow or maybe the flow's too much and it, it, it simply, well, it could just overflow. We want to go down a lot more because if we're too high, it's very difficult to uh, work around that. If we go too low, we can add some pipe to it, maybe an elbow that points up so we can get a little bit more water volume in there and flow. But for the most part, uh, the biggest issue I was facing was this doesn't even fit behind the 2,000 gallon aquarium unless I cut these handles off. I didn't want to cut the panels off because I wanted to go through this part right here, which is the smoothest side. I can't really go through here, otherwise I'd have to go one on top of the other, can't go on side to side. Um, so cutting these off has to happen because it has to go like this. I'll show you how I cut those off in a second. So I do this freehand. I just kind of guess, no I don't, just make this up as I go along. I figure out where these are going to go. For the most part, I keep it away from the, uh, the lip here. I don't want this to overlap or touch it. And I move it down about a half an inch. Um, for me, it's in the center of the E and the center of the B. So all of these kind of match. It's typically, technically not going to matter if you're off by like even upwards of, a, of an inch so long as you're not too high up. So those two dots are the centers. I also like... There's two. Now you see all those burrs? All of this gotta come off and doing this isn't gonna be enough. I'll show you what I do. Take a knife of at least some sort and kind of just go around and shave it off. Making sure that it's even. I don't cut like straight down onto where the contact surface is, just like on the outside corners like on the edges, just to get these burrs off. Otherwise, I'm not gonna create a watertight seal. Even after this is installed and the plumbing's on and whatnot, I still need to do a, a water test of about 24 hours. So I'm only gonna be able to get one completely done and show you guys how to work, how it works, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to install it in this video because I want this video out today. Today is Friday. You guys are gonna watch this today. I'm also preparing to go live this coming Sunday at 8 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. You'll just have to Google whatever time zone you're in. I'm four hours ahead of Pacific, but you guys voted in my community tab that you wanted me to. I, I said I was bringing back my live videos if you haven't done them for a few years, and you guys all voted for Sunday, which is great. Some of you are like, do a Friday or do a Saturday, but those are my popular days um, and plans for with like family and whatnot. I also think I'm going to start doing them weekly. Um, I'm going to put up a link to the live here shortly, probably today or tomorrow, and make sure you set your reminder or you're going to miss it. Um, I'm doing a presentation, I believe. I'm going to do a presentation, then do some Q&A and whatnot, but the presentation is on aquarium filtration. <clears throat> and not like what you think. We'll talk about that shortly. So now, boom, goes in super easy, doesn't it? Yeah, that's because they, they need to be stretched out. And that is the difficult part, which is putting the pipes through. You typically want to lubricate these quite a bit in order to get them in. It is incredibly difficult, but we're gonna have to stop because the water's flowing. That is not me peeing. That is the sound of the buckets. 
you know what? This is essentially the hardest part is getting these on and then getting the pipes into it. I'll take some soapy water and lube these up and they slide in a little bit easier, but not that easy. From there, I slip on a T. Actually, I think I have all the parts in here. I already have them pre-cut. That's the T I'm talking about. You'll see these more in action. I mean, this is all self-described. I don't know if I need any more of these or not. I don't even know what I'm doing with this side, but this is gonna be biological. We're doing submerged media on this one, and the one I'm building here, I'm likely doing fluidized. Or I could do submerged and fluidized, or submerged and submerged. I'm not sure what I wanna do there. But I mean, in total, I'll be able to hold 45 gallons of biological media. Each container is going to be flowing around 2,400 gallons an hour. So we'll get close to 5,000 gallons per hour with the two of them, plus flow in the tank. This is gonna be perfect for the 2,000 gallon aquarium. Um, but like I said, but this is just the flow of the hose, right? I'm gonna finish filling these up and you'll see 2,400 gallons an hour going through it. It's not overflowing, not doing anything. Take a look down there. Um, water's coming up through. It's releasing the gas off here and coming through. One thing that I like about this, so I'm gonna be able to put the lids back on and they'll be completely silent. I'll drill a hole here to have the hose come up for the return. And for this one, I'll drill a hole in it uh, for, the, for the drain. How could you possibly use these on a smaller aquarium? I'll show you how I'm using it on mine first, uh, and then we'll go from there. I'm using gravity fed overflows. So what that means is I can connect, well, I'd have to open the ball valve, but I can connect to this, right? Open the ball valve, water's gonna start gushing out. What if I put an elbow on it and raise the pipe? Water's still gonna keep gushing out until we get to the top of the tank and it's higher than the water level in here. I've shown you how to do this before. So the height of that pipe is going to set the water level in this tank. So I'll have this pipe come up, come all the way over and drain into the next tank. Water that's being pumped out of the barrels into here is going to displace the tank here, causing more water to the water level here and to rise slightly and to flow in there. When the pump shuts off, the water stops. Okay, that's cool, Joey, but I don't have a drilled aquarium. I have a big tank, but I don't want to drill it. I don't know how to, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I'm building an overhead filter with the same idea for this one. All we have to do is put the pump in the tank instead of in the filter. The pump feeds water to this, and we just need one more uh, uniline in the bottom or near the top, wherever you want it to be and that overflows to the main aquarium. Problem is we just need to put these higher up in the air. Basically wherever this return is needs to be, say we put the return right here, just for just for purposes of this. In fact, I might even build more of these. I think I might build one of these for the 700 too. But this here is the overflow that I'll likely put it right there. It'll overflow into the 700 gallon aquarium, but this has to be above the trim of the 700. So these gotta be, I gotta build a platform that's about three feet up in the air. Now these are only about two and a half feet tall, but the 2000 gallon is four feet tall, even taller with the rock. So I need to build a platform that's about 16 inches tall for these to sit on. I wish I could get these all up and installed, but I'm waiting for little bits and pieces and parts. And if I don't put this video out today, it might not be out till Sunday. So I was like, I'll show them how to build it and what I did so far, uh, bring you guys along for this. And then we'll go from there see what you guys think. Maybe you guys have some different ideas or whatnot, but obviously this is gonna happen. Everything's already drilled and ready to go. And one of the things I did, because I knew this was gonna work, I've done this before, was as I was cutting everything up and measuring it for this tank, I'm sorry, for this filter, like I, I measured these, made sure they were slightly below the lid so I could put the lid back on. Uh, the lids are not airtight, so it can still suck air from here. Uh, the downspouts, everything was pre-measured, and then I just cut them all over again for this one. So basically all I got to do is drill the holes and uh, connect everything and everything will be done there. To cut off the handles, which I just did today, I just used one of the, this little tool here. I don't even know what this is called, but zoop, 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 it vibrates and, go vroom, 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 and it's done. Now, technically I can't even set these up and get them running completely because I don't have enough biological media to go in there. I'm still waiting for some of that as well. But we do have a tremendous amount that we're going to be using on the 180 filters as well as the 2000 that's just sitting in here waiting. Already pre-cycled. Now, what about the biological media that's already in these big canister filters? Well, it is a fluidized media and I might use it or I might not because I still have some really big stuff as well. But bottom line, I don't have enough submerged media, so I've got lots coming. I got a couple boxes of it. 
that will completely fill one of them. Um, and we'll have this up and running likely by next week. And at that point, I have to drain this tank. I wanted to give it a good cleaning anyways. Just some of the algae and whatnot, no, no big deal. Um, I want to remove the Severums because I want to put them in one of my 180s. I love those fish. I want to put the Severums with the Festivums. Beautiful South American aquarium. Uh, hardscape, Severums eat plants, so I can't really put them in plants. There's a few other little things I got to do. The, the, the Oscars, the Rays, and the Arwana are staying in there. Ooh, and I'll take the Sunshine Pleco and put them in with the, uh, the Severums too. All right, so we're almost completely filled up at this point. Um, I'm gonna take this big old pond pump and toss it in here. I'm likely gonna use these as well, but I'm not completely sure. Uh, the exit will just get jammed in here. This is going to act like uh, the, the, the aquarium. As I pump water out through here, back to the main aquarium, obviously it's gonna overflow back into here. Instead, I'm just bypassing that to show you that it works and how it works. I also, oh damn. Also did a 24 hour water test on this. You guys get wet, sorry about that. Um, so nothing leaks. Everything's soaked now, but nothing's been leaking. Um, but as you can see, this is how much flow is coming out of this. This is a two or a one and a half inch pipe. That's a lot. Now imagine as it's overflowing through a two inch pipe, it's not gonna look like this coming from the tank. It's gonna be at a two inch pipe, but I'm going to put another T on there so it slows the flow down, so it's not slamming into the biological, or I'm sorry, into the mechanical media. But now you can see, this is max water level that it'll get to. It gets to about the, the bottom of, can you even see? And that's how, why I go through so many cameras. I destroy them and break them constantly. All right, so water level's always gonna be to about here, right at the top of the T's. Technically, it can go higher, and if it does, it just creates more down pressure and force and more, even more water can flow out. Oh, here's an idea of what the, uh, from the tank's gonna look like. See, this is two, this is a two inch pipe and a two inch pipe, but if I were to put a T on a two inch pipe, it'll flow more like this. So that's, that's exactly what I'm kind of looking for. This is gonna be quiet, there's not gonna be any humidity, but it's gonna have the potential to filter a massive volume of water, um, really cheap and effectively. I think I'm about a hundred bucks. Oh no, it's doing it again. There's so much water. There's so much water. Okay, hey, anyway, I'm shutting it off. You get the idea. Anyways, that's where I'm at with that filter. Sorry, I, it's not complete up and running and whatnot, but I didn't have anything else completed to film a video about, so I thought I'd show you exactly what I got done so far. You know, not only waiting for the supplies, but finding them, sourcing them, making sure they're easy to find. Um, and then of course, building it, water testing it, and it does take time. Uh, coupled with a few other things that I'm, don't look, working on. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to leave a link in the description to the live video. Set your reminder. I'm told that notifications don't go out the same uh, for live videos or whatnot, but I am going live this coming Sunday, and I do plan to do them every week, once a week. I'm going to try it for a month. Month of November, I will do a live video every Sunday. I gave you guys options of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and you all pick Sunday, not all, but like 60, 70%, something like that. In my community tab, there's a voting thing. You guys gotta make sure you're subscribed to it and notifications on, bells and all those whistles and whatever else, or you're gonna miss these types of things. Also, quick update on a few other things. See the water, uh, the air bubbles coming out of this? And that, and that, and that. I hooked up that gigantic air pump. It's a mess right now, like kind of disorderly, but I just wanted to make sure it's all working. Oh, and then this one, and this one, and that one over there, and that one over there. Anyways, they're all connected through here, and a lot of you wanted to hear the sound. That's it. A light hum. The loudest thing in the aquarium gallery, by far, besides my big mouth, is these fans, which you can't hear, but you might hear it like blowing against the microphone or something. Um, but the loudest thing in here is a tiny little air pump in comparison. That one back here, that pumps uh, water through the uh, sponge filters for the discus tanks. Oh, sorry guys, sorry, I said sorry. See how loud that is? That's the loudest thing out here. I can't wait to shut that off. More discus. So I gotta build a uh, filter for the 700 next. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use that 55 gallon barrel that's outside or just rebuild these brute ones. Although I bought all the, they only had four in stock. So maybe I'll wait till more come in. Do I have enough? Wonder if I have enough uni seals first and foremost. Oh, and I'm bringing a drip system back 
to the 2,000 gallon aquarium as well. You guys see me do drip systems years and years ago. So I need four for the filters and then two overflows for it. Yeah, that'll do it. And then I have an extra one plus these four inch ones plus bulkheads and whatnot. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go with the same filters for everything, keep it universally easy to take care of. And then of course, mechanical filtration, we just use filter floss, quilt batting, check it out. Bam, this stuff, you go to your fish store and you buy this stuff, like a tiny little square of pre-cut piece for like, uh, Lord knows how much, but a bag of that's like five, 10 bucks. Uh, and that will last me months. Well, maybe a couple months. Anyways, I'm actually really excited about the uh, upcoming live video. Uh, I'm finally going to kind of dive deep into filtration, do a presentation, mostly an introduction into it. And I'm not talking about, if you have a 50 gallon tank, you should use a, a hang on the back filter. I'm not talking about that stuff. Uh, we'll be going over how much biological, do you, biological media do you need, depending on the fish that you're keeping. How do you determine that? What about flow rates? What about methods of filtrations? The pros and cons and the flow rates for them and how much media do you need for each one? I'm going to show you how to properly size your aquarium filters for the fish that you're actually keeping because there's, there's this myth in the hobby. Can you have too much filtration? It depends on how much money you wanna waste because the answer simply is yes, you can have too much filtration where you're just blowing money for no reason. You don't need that much or maybe you don't have enough. I'm gonna teach you how to do this exactly. For those that have my book already know how to do this, but we're going to reveal it for the first time ever. So make sure you set your notifications for that. I'm going to try to get that video scheduled for Sunday. Um, anyways, I gotta get back to work, get a bunch of stuff done. This is more of an update, I guess. Oh, Piranha Tank, they don't like the air bubbles at all. I added the air bubbles like three, four or five days ago, and they're like skittish with the bubbles on. So I might have to shut them off. And I'm only seeing about a dozen to 15 out at a time. And you guys know that we have many more than that. So I do like how much um, wave action it's creating. So maybe I will just take, I'll take one out and just run one and see how they act then. I'll do that right now, actually. Don't even have to take it out. See what they do. Yeah, so these guys just did not like the air bubbles at all it seems like they're a little calmer now but we'll give it a few minutes this one being over here i might even take it and chuck it over into that back corner yeah i think i'm actually going to do that for sure how will i do that i don't know but i'm gonna figure that out right now the hard part about this the hard part the actual hard part about this is these guys are not these guys but this tank is five feet front to back and that back lid is being held down with that massive tree. So it's not gonna be that easy. It's not gonna be that hard either. And I think putting it in the back, it's not gonna make a difference whether it's here or back there. I just want water circulation in the tank, more of it for cheap. I mean, 100 watts is running thousands of gallons of water as opposed to thousands of gallons of equipment and hundreds of watts of power circulating the air or circulating the tanks. But like I said, not all fish like the air bubbles. there in you go lift you up get you under Woo I did it yeah that's like a dead spot in the tank too so as you still get the water movement um, because the outputs over here when I build the new filter it's coming through the center and one's facing this one and one's facing that way and we won't need this anymore but putting it back there in that back corner will help circulate that back corner a little bit more. Maybe it won't freak the uh, piranha out so much, but we'll see over time. Anyways, that's what I do out here. When I'm, when I'm working on stuff or when I'm building things, I am sidetracked by a hundred other little things that I want to do. And that's why nothing ever gets done. But <laughs> I'm really tempted to start eating some lettuce. Look, it's growing really well. Move out, guy. Out of the way, filters. It's actually starting to grow. So that's cool. The tomatoes have stopped. I think I have to pollinate them, but I don't know how. The herbs, I'm getting bored of them. Although this fell over, I guess it's kind of growing. But I mean, I feel like it should be growing a lot more. I'm putting the severums and everybody in this tank. Oops, sorry. I'm just trying to sink all of this wood first. So it could be another week or two before I could do that. Everything else is good. Oh, and check out the lionfish. He wants you guys to know that he hates this location and he wants to be moved. 
He wants to be able to see me more often. Look how awesome and friendly he is. He's also thinking he wants tank mates. He's also thinking he wants to do a school of flying fish. Maybe three to five of them. That would be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, I've been thinking of that. Because lionfish in the wild hunt together as packs. And they look amazing together. And the 180 gallon aquarium can technically support three to five of them. I just got to find more that are the same size as him. Which could prove troublesome. But I'll work on it. Let me know if you guys think I should do that. A school of lionfish. Whoo! Just saying that out loud sounds sexy. <sighs> oh, lovely. I forgot to shut the hose off. And this is why I flood aquariums when I'm doing water changes. I just start doing too many things. I'm not even doing water changes. All right. This is too much. I gotta get back to work. I'll see you guys shortly.